Welcome to another advanced dialogue system tutorial video. At this point, you should have an NPC who can turn and face the player, as well as a scriptable object that allows you to write conversations where you select players from a drop-down menu, give them words to actually say, and can even create options so that our text will eventually be able to branch. At the moment, however, all that information is just being stored down in our assets folder and isn't actually in the game. So in this video, we're going to create a dialogue manager object so that our information can get from the NPC and into the game. We'll also run a few tests to make sure that everything's working up to this point. Now, that's a fair bit to do in one video, so let's get started. So before we do anything else, I just want to do a little bit of organization. You'll notice that my dialogue folder here is starting to get just a little bit busy. And just as I created a folder for my actor scriptable objects, I'm now going to create a new folder. We'll call this one dialogue scriptable objects. This will just be the place where we can store all of our conversations as well as the options that can be chosen within those. Already things are looking a lot nicer and I'm just gonna create one more folder here and we're just gonna make this one for scripts in general. All right, now that's looking a lot nicer and cleaner there. Now before we get into our script though, we're just gonna quickly head to the hierarchy where we're just gonna right click and just create an empty. I'm gonna call this one Dialogue Manager. And this is just gonna be a empty game object that will hold our advanced Dialogue Manager script. So we can click Add Component and we can just put it on there. Now it's in the game so that we can actually talk to it. All right, with that done, let's head into our NPC Dialogue script. Now the NPC dialogue script acts as a sort of middleman, grabbing information from specific conversations which are held in scriptable objects and then passing them on to the advanced dialogue manager. So we're going to just begin by making a public reference to advanced dialogue scriptable objects. We're going to make this one an array because we're going to drop in as many conversation pieces as we want and we'll call it conversation. We'll then just head down below here where we're going to make a reference to the advanced dialogue manager itself and we'll just call it advanced dialogue manager. That way we can get the conversations and pass them along to the manager. Lastly, we're just going to create a private bool called Dialogue Initiated, which will serve as a sort of a switch that allows the script to know when to stop and start sending information along. With those variables created, we can now head down into our start method and we're just going to let it know how to find our advanced dialogue manager. So we'll just tell it that the manager is equal to, we'll do a game object dot find search and just type in the name of that game object we created earlier. In my case, I called it Dialogue Manager. We'll then just get the component of the script we actually want, which is our Advanced Dialogue Manager. With that done, this script is now able to send messages along to the manager. So we can head on down to our onTriggerStay method, and we're going to actually start sending those messages. So first of all, if we go into our if check here, we want to check not only if the player has come within range, but also if Dialogue is not already initiated. The reason we're doing this is because we don't want to constantly send information over to the dialogue manager. We just want to do it once when the player enters um, or stays within the collider. We can now come down to the bottom of this method and along with telling our NPC to flip toward the player, we also want to send the information of what to say to our dialogue manager. So we'll type advanced dialogue manager dot initiate dialogue, which is a method we haven't created yet. And then we'll put this in brackets. By writing this, we are just passing along all of the information held within this version of the script so that our dialogue manager can now read whatever this NPC has to say. We're also going to let our script know that dialogue has now been initiated so that we don't send the message over and over and over again, but just once. We are now oh so close to being done this script, but first we're just going to head into our on trigger exit method. At this point, we just want to send along a message when we leave the NPC's collider to our advanced dialogue manager that we actually want to turn off the dialogue. And so again, we're going to just create this method here that it's not going to like just yet, but we'll fix that in just a second. The final thing we just need to do is let the script know that dialogue is no longer initiated. So we'll put false, that way when we re-enter the collider of the NPC, the conversation can be initiated over again. Now I know at this point it's been a long time since we did a test to make sure everything's working, so we're just going to do that now. So let's go to both of these lines that are popping errors, the initiate dialogue and turn off dialogue, and we're just going to comment those out and then head over into Unity. 
All right, now at this point, if I go to my NPC, in my case, Martin, and look on his dialogue handler, I should have my NPC dialogue script here. And there should be a place now for conversations. Now, we came up with some conversations in the last tutorial. So if you head into your dialogue scriptable objects folder, you'll find them there. And we're at the point now that we can actually start dragging a conversation up here, and it's going to show up. Now, if there were more parts to the conversation, I could just keep dragging them and adding them. Now, obviously, the options later on will add in a different branching way, but for now, I'm just going to put them in there for testing purposes. Now, I can actually have a conversation that we can cycle through by going through the different steps of the array. All right, there's our first test. We're going to now head into our dialogue manager script. So let's pop back out here. And we're going to get things set up so that we can actually do a little more testing. So at the moment, our advanced dialogue manager is not looking so advanced. All we've got in here is some enumerations to keep track of our actors. What we want to do is make sure that our NPC dialogue script is properly sending over the information when we try to talk to our NPC. So we'll head up to the top here under our class. We're going to actually find the NPC dialogue that we're currently stepping through. So we'll type private advanced dialogue scriptable object current conversation. So this variable will hold the information of whichever individual conversation we're currently having. We'll then create another private variable. This one's going to be an integer. And we're just going to call it step num because it's going to keep track of what step in the dialogue we're currently on. So it'll start at zero and work its way through each part of the conversation. At this point, we can scroll down below our start and update methods. And we're going to create those methods that were missing in NPC dialogue and giving us those red squiggly lines. So we'll make a public void called initiate dialogue. We can then head back to our NPC dialogue. Let's remove those comments here. And you'll notice that after initiate dialogue, we are passing the information of this, which just refers to the NPC dialogue script. So now in our brackets in the dialogue manager, we can just add in NPC dialogue, and we'll just call it NPC dialogue, which just allows this script to read the particular script that's on our NPC. So now we just need to actually read the array of conversations from our NPC that we're currently making our way through. So we'll grab that variable from the top that we already made, current conversation. And we'll just let our script know that current conversation is equal to the NPC dialog dot conversation zero, which means we're just going to start with the first item in the array so that we can work our way through. So with that done, in our NPC dialog, you'll notice that the red squiggly has now disappeared from our initiate dialog. And a way this works now is with our on trigger stay method, as soon as the player is within the trigger of our NPC, the NPC will now tell our dialogue manager to initiate dialogue and send over the conversation. Initiate dialogue will then start with the first item of the conversation. At this point, we really should perform a test to make sure everything's working properly. So we're just going to go down to the next line where we'll type in debug.log. And then in the brackets with quotation marks, we'll just put started conversation. Then we're going to put a plus and put current conversation. So now when we test our game, when we walk up to our NPC, we should now get a message popping up in our console telling us that it has started conversation, conversation one. Now the reason it's conversation one is because if I click on my NPC and his dialog handler, we'll notice that that's what I called the first element of my conversation. All right, that's working great. There's one last thing we're gonna add to finish the communication between the NPC and our dialog manager. And for our last stop today, we're just gonna come down below initiate dialog and create one more method. This will be a public void turn off dialog. If you then pop back to our NPC dialog script, we can now remove the comments around our turn off dialog, and there should no longer be any red squiggly lines there. Now this method gets called anytime we leave the trigger of the NPC, and all we want to do at that point is just reset the step number of the conversation. Now just to make sure this is working, we are going to add a debug.log, and this time we'll just type ended conversation, reset the step to plus step number, so we can make sure that it is resetting to zero. Now I realize this is not the most thrilling of outcomes, but when I go near my NPC now, we'll get a printout to the console that the conversation started, and when I leave, it will just fire telling us that it's ended the conversation and reset the step to zero. All right, we're now communicating between NPC and Dialogue Manager, which means in our next video, we can actually get that dialogue up on the screen, working the way that we want it to. Look forward to seeing you in that video. Until then, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers. Thank you.